about darkness. But in order for us to improve ourselves, we have to identify the difficulties of life, right? So we can make adjustments. And every time I look at these titles, it's just something, I don't want to take your time, Kirsten, but it's on Alfredo Luminum Miranda, Emmanuel. They always bring these really, I don't think it's just a catch title, right? But to really awaken us and say, wait, we can all change. So with no further ado, Kirsten, please take it away. Thank you, Leo. That was a great reminder. That was a most excellent reminder. Just want to make sure that this is going to work. Okay. Awesome. Well, welcome, everyone. Oh, come on. We can do better than that. Hello. What about that second row? It sounds a little bit dead over there. Hello. Hello. Second row there. Okay. Third row. Oh, okay. All right. It's a rough crowd out there. Rough crowd. Well, <clears throat> we want to, we always want to make sure that what we do here is does not feel redundant, does not feel repetitive, does not feel stale or monotonous. Because maybe sometimes because this is a place of uh, spiritual enlightenment, we're always talking about similar-ish subjects, we might begin to unknowingly tune out the message. And we really don't want that to happen. We really want us to take a moment to, you know, stop and open our minds for a second. And to also just be reminded that those of us who stand at this podium, we have not, nor do we claim, perfected or reached any level even remotely close to perfection. We are just like you guys, we're in the audience too of life trying to learn, trying to do better. We stumble and we fall, but the point is that we try to keep getting back up again and keep trying our best. We have not mastered this. So by any mean, by all means, please, we are not here to judge. Um, this is not the point of spiritism. Only God can judge, and yet all he does is love. So taking a, a page out of God's book, <laughs> you know, trying to just be more compassionate, more understanding because of the title that, that Leo brought, Days of Darkness. Who is familiar with a day of darkness that they've had? Or who can say, you don't have, you don't have to lift up your hand. If you want to, feel free. I know this is, a, this, is a, this is a tough crowd. So if you don't want to, it's okay. But if you've ever experienced a day or more of what you might refer to as darkness, you can go ahead and raise your hand because maybe I, I, I'm willing to bet if we all were to close our eyes and I were to ask you to raise your hands, probably I'd say the vast majority would. Am I right? Close? Yeah? This thing on? No? Okay. What about has anyone ever heard of Dark Night of the Soul? Paul, I know. Yeah, I know that third row. Uh, yeah, I know you guys. Dark night of the soul. If you could think in your mind, just, you know, spitball in here. If you could imagine, what would that mean, a dark night of the soul? What do you guys think that means? There's no like, you know, the, don't be afraid. I won't call on you. But does anyone want to just guess? Anybody? Well, go ahead. Be our brave soul. Heavy. Heavy. I isolating. Extremely cut off. Despairing. I mean, I could keep going. I don't want to depress people. <laughs> that, that was good. Isolating, despairing. Has anyone ever felt those emotions? Some degree? 
just raise your hand. Moment of braveness. Okay, we've got one, two, three brave souls, four. Anyone over here in this section? No? It's okay if you have it. I mean, if you have it, you have it. That's okay. Well, let's, let's talk later because I want to know what your secret is to life. Life is full of challenges. And if you haven't had challenges yet, maybe it's not your time. But a dark night of the soul is a term that's used for when we really go through exactly what it sounds like, what feels like just utter darkness. And Joanna entitles this particular chapter, Days of Darkness. We have a couple of, I'd say, let's see, let's see, uh, four or five. What can I count? Four, five, yes. Six. No, I was thinking about the, the young people we have. I mean, young in, in terms of earthly age, right? Because I consider myself young at heart. But for all of us, regardless of what biological age we are, this message is really really important. So we take this moment to pause because of the importance of this message, because the incidence of suicide is so high, more than it's ever been. The incidence and the increased number of people being diagnosed with depression, anxiety, and all types of mental illnesses is, is astounding. And as someone that's a public servant, you know, we try to find ways that work in the health sector. We try to find ways and it feels like we're just always grasping at straws what to do next. But here we are as a public servant trying to do our best to spread this message of hope. But before every chapter, you guys know the drill. Before every chapter, Joanna likes to prime us with affirmations. And it's not just because it's it's poetic, it sounds nice, it's you know, it's that artistic way of Joanna. No, it actually, I mean, aside from that, I'm sure she does it for those reasons. But it's also to, to get us ready for what's to come in her message. <coughs> so I'm gonna ask you all a favor before we start before we read the affirmations. Is everybody comfortable just closing their eyes? Yes? Yes? Is anyone not comfortable? Let me ask that. Is anybody not comfortable closing their eyes in this moment? Just raise your hand. Okay, so if I look out at everyone, when I tell you to, you're gonna be closing your eyes. And I want you to listen to these affirmations and I want you to repeat them in your mind. Good? Okay. Everyone, you can close your eyes now. Now is the time. Close your eyes. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to put both arms above your head and stretch. Keep your eyes closed. Keep your eyes closed. Put your both arms above your head. Stretch, stretch, stretch those arms. Stretch, 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 stretch. Oh, reach the sky and put them back down. Okay. Now, I want you to center your mind and I want you just to picture if you could be anywhere in the world in a place that's peaceful, that you could vacation to, that's calm, next to a river, a big field of flowers, a beach, some place where you can just sit quietly and safely. I want you to imagine yourself there. And I want you just to listen to the words that I'm gonna be repeating and just try your best in your mind to repeat them after me. Divine light, divine light envelops me and scatters the outer darkness that used to besiege me with bitterness. 
I let myself be enlightened. I let myself be enlightened and all my problems disappear, enabling me to better see the plan for my physical existence. I let myself be enlightened and all my problems disappear, enabling me to better see the plan for my physical existence. Pessimism vanishes. Irritation is gone. I am destined for success. And I pursue it with a mind enriched with enthusiasm. I am destined for success and I pursue it with a mind enriched with enthusiasm. I am bathed in outer light. I am inner light. I am bathed in outer light. I am inner light. Let us take a deep breath in through our nose. Hold. Hold and breathe out through your mouth. Let's just feel this moment, be present in this moment, keeping our eyes closed. And whenever you're ready, count back from five and open your eyes. How was that experience for you, Lulu? Enlightening. Enlightening. Mm, okay. Chris, how was that for you? Mm, hi. Mm -hmm. Maria? I didn't want to come back. <laughs> I didn't want to come back. Anybody else? Days of Darkness. Joanna starts out this chapter. Coincidentally, they are days that are characterized by a string of unpleasant occurrences. Nothing seems to go right. All activities are mixed up and facts are depressing and disturbing. With each new attempt, other failures ensue as if the order of natural events were totally upset. Sounds pretty gloomy. She goes on, on these occasions, problems pile up and pessimism settles in the mind and emotions, leading to negative memories with grim omens. Has anyone ever experienced that? That feeling like when it rains, it pours? like that domino effect, like it's one thing after another, after another, after another, and it's just like, really? What do you do when you feel like that? When it rains and pours, when it rains, it pours. When you have that feeling, what do you do? How do you react inside of yourself? What is the inner dialogue you're having? I want you to think about it right now. What is the inner dialogue you're having? Those who suffer such injunctions tend to get discouraged and take refuge in psychological patterns of self-affliction, unhappiness, and self-content. I asked you, what is your internal dialogue? Does it look like this? Do we take refuge in that self 
pity, that cycle of just pessimism and continued negative emotions, and you just get bogged down and discouraged. They feel besieged by colossal forces that cannot be fought against and thus let themselves be dragged along by the contrary currents, poisoning themselves with ill humor. So when it rains, it pours. What do you do? The question. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on a random person. Think about the answer. So when I call on you, you have it. And you get that feeling, man, when it rains, it pours, right? Am I right? And you get that feeling, what do you do? There's not a right or wrong answer. This isn't a, a classroom like you're in college. I'm not a professor. I don't teach. Would anyone like to share? I'm curious about the young people. When it when it rains, it pours. What do you do, Daniel? What, what do you do? There's no there's no wrong answer. There's no, you know, like go into my room, lock out the world. Just find someone to talk to, I guess. Find someone to talk to. That's good. So you already can recognize, like, okay, let me not sit with this. Did you want to say something, Luciana? Uh, um, sure. Okay. Um, I know you meditate. I know you like to meditate yeah. and, yeah. I'd say, like, as a metaphor, wait for the clouds to clear up. Mm, I like that. So you try to view it from that positive perspective, like, okay, let's just, let's just ride the wave. I like that. Anybody else in that, uh, technically the third row? Anybody else? Okay. Change from frog perspective to eagle perspective. Change from frog perspective to eagle perspective. Mm, I like that. So what I'm hearing a lot of you say is that you can recognize it in that moment that you're not in the, the best way, that you try to have something change your perspective or ask, some, ask for help. That's, that's good. Even if you didn't, it's not wrong. We're just here to get to know ourselves, to see what it is that we do. Lee, I'm sorry, Lee, did you want to say something? Oh, okay. Are you sure? <clears throat> Am I being invited to say something? <laughs> <laughs> you don't have to. I think the the idea of of having going through a moment like this and recognizing it in itself is a a great ac accomplishment because sometimes we're in the middle of it and we don't see it. We don't recognize that this is a troubling moment. We just just like a child would keep crying and battling so i think that just recognizing that it is a tough moment in and itself is um, a great accomplishment to me absolutely that's a great point just recognizing like it's raining i mean when it rains it pours that in of itself is a it's a good thing but let's hear what the advice the feedback that joanna gives to us and excuse my voice She begins to talk about and gives us, she gives us perspective on those dark days. And she says the following, she says, these are days of trials and not for discouragement of challenge and not for cessation, for the cessation of effort. The harsher the difficulties, the more should be the investment of energies and the more careful the application of moral values in the battle. Giving up without a fight, the quicker the failure. 
And when one goes into the battle with ideas of losing, part of the endeavor is already lost. So when we go into a situation or when I hold this disposition inside of myself where I'm just a negative, pessimistic person. And by the way, we might not view ourselves as such. You might not think, but sometimes we are a little bit, even in the slightest. Like, oh, well, this is not going to turn out well. I already know it. We're not saying to be, uh, to pretend, to make believe, but just to understand that our mindset is everything. Our perception is everything. And then if we kind of change it from looking at it from perspective of like, oh gosh, this is, this is just the most horrible thing to, okay, this is a challenge. Life is challenging me. What can I do? Have any of you, I mean, I, I know some of you have, but just by a show of hands, um, how many of you have grown up in like a Catholic church or Presbyterian or regular church? Yeah. Yep. So the reason why I ask that is because there's a, a famous hymnal or hymn. I always forget what the difference of that is, but anyway. Um, there's a famous hymn um, that's entitled, It Is Well With My Soul. I'm sure if I could sing, which I cannot, um, you would recognize it. It's an old hymn. Um, it is well with my soul. So this particular hymn is sung in churches until, until today. It's been over 150 some years where it's, it still gets sung and a lot of famous Christian music incorporates uh, the song as well. Why am I mentioning this? Well, the writer of the song, his name is Horatio Stafford. You probably never paid attention. I never did. I paid attention to the, you know, who actually wrote the hymns when you open up your, your hymnal. I think the hymnal is a book, right? Okay, all right. Um, when you open up your hymnal when you're at church, you see a bunch of songs in there, right, that you, you sing. But I've never paid attention to any of the writers in there. But only recently I came to know of this, the story, the true story of the gentleman that wrote, It Is Well With My Soul. And he has the most tragic of tragic stories. But much like this little cat, his mindset was that he was a lion, that he was this child of God, and that God was mightier. Horatio Stafford lived in the time of Kardec in the mid-1850s, late 1800s. He amassed a huge fortune. He was a devout Christian, got married, uh, had five children, um, was a very uh, prominent lawyer in the state of Chicago in the mid-1800s. Um, he was a senior partner at a law firm, and he was just one of those rich people. And he bought up a bunch of um, um, property in Chicago as well. But something happened. He ended up, those of you who might be familiar with the, uh, the, Chica the famous Chicago fires, does anybody remember their history class, the, the great fires of Chicago? Remember, like this was back in like the late uh, 1800s when like, I, I don't know, it's like, a large chunk, the, the fire burned for three days and most of Chicago was just burned down. So he lost his entire fortune because right before the fires had happened, he had decided to take all of his wealth and invest it into property. And then days later, the fire happened and him, his wife, his children were completely broke. And to add insult to injury, soon thereafter, his two-year-old son died of pneumonia. So they lost all their money. Their youngest child died. Soon thereafter, <clears throat> most people you might think, well, he probably you know cursed God or you know really just became really depressed. Quite the opposite. It fortified his faith. And he said, God will provide, I will find a way. And soon he, re he rebuilt his entire fortune. So but he rebuilt his entire fortune so much that he wanted to 
um, expand. So he had um, been quite busy. So he wanted to plan a, a family uh, vacation, except in those days there was no planes. They had to go on a ship. So his whole family, his four living daughters, his, his wife, they planned to go to Great Britain. They're all ready. They're the, the day of them going on the trip on the boat. Um, the husband, um, something happened at work, so he had to stay behind. The wife and four children, ages like five, seven, eight, and 11, something like that, all went with the mother. He said, listen, I'll take the next boat out. I'll meet you guys in, Br in Great Britain. You know, we'll get together. It'll be fine. Well, his wife, the four kids are on their way, um, and a tragedy happens. This boat, and it's not a boat, it's a ship, collides with another ship. And within 12 minutes, this ship goes down. Out of the 300 plus people that were on that ship, about 27, 28 lived, some of them crew members. Twelve minutes, and one of the people that actually survived had actually uh, known the wife, Mrs. Stafford, and had actually later recounted and told in an interview that as you now you have to imagine this. Like, I mean, we we're telling this story, and it's like, oh wow, that's crazy. It's like watching the Titanic. Like, oh my God. But you have to imagine what, how you would feel. I mean, I know like for most of us in this room, you're not parents, but imagine having your four children, the boat is sinking, and it's noted that a witness saw Mrs. Stafford go to her knees and started to pray. But she didn't pray out of desperation. She didn't pray, God, you know, craziness, or she, you know, what you might think. But what she prayed actually was so remarkable. She said, God, if your will is to take me and my children, so be it. But something to effect of, and I'm paraphrasing here, if I could make a request to allow us to live, but if not, I accept your will. And her and her children were gathered together holding hands and just praying. And soon the water engulfed them and hundreds of others. About a day later, a sailor was on his rowboat in the area and saw the wreckage. And he saw this, this woman unconscious on a piece of driftwood, pulled her up on his boat, brought her to shore, and it turned out that I actually was Mrs. Stafford. She ended up living. Her four daughters died. They drowned, but she lived. She gets back to shore. In those days, there was only telegrams, so she sent a telegram to her husband, who was far away. And she tells him, I'm the only one that lived. So on his boat ride back to see his wife and decide what they were going to do with their life is where he began to contemplate the writing of this song, It Is Well With My Soul. And if you, if you know anything about the lyrics to that song, he, he talks about that even though God walks us through dark days, and I'm paraphrasing here, I'm not, this is not verbatim, he always knows and he always knew that it's going to be okay. And this song, this famous hymn, is a testament into this day for this family. Because yet again, when he lost all of his children, and now it's just him and his wife, he did not waver in his faith or in his belief. He did not look at it from a pessimistic perspective. He clung to his faith. He did not give up. He ended up becoming, continued his success. His wife had three more children. And what did they do with the rest of their life? They didn't lament or be depressed. I'm sure, for sure. Let's not take away from the fact that you lose children, that's difficult. We are sure, positive, that they went through hardships. But what they decided to do, they moved to Israel, opened up a foundation for the poor and disenfranchised, independent of any religion. It wasn't a Christian-based foundation. It was a, if you need help, we are here to help you foundation. 
and they lived out their life until they died helping other people. And Mr. and Mrs. Stafford are, have quoted in saying that despite their afflictions and their hardships, they always felt called to serve and help others. Despite their sorrows, despite God taking away their five children, Mrs. Stafford is quoted in saying, if God did that, he had a reason. And one day I will know what that reason is. But for now, I'm going to do what I have to do. Now, that part's paraphrased, okay? I probably should, you know, in the 1800s, they didn't talk like that. But it's something for us to think about. Because Joanna goes on and gives us the following tidbits of advice. She says, on such dark days, which do happen periodically and at times become continuous, be more vigilant and thoughtful. Why did Mr. Stafford say that his faith grew when those hardships happened? Because of this. When we suffer, when we go through hardships, it's as if we become more acutely aware of so much that we need to become more vigilant and more thoughtful. It is normal for there to be one or more failures when several activities are involved. Even so, an unending string of failures may have roots in pernicious spirit-related causes where certain personages are interested in harming you, making mental or emotional space for obsessive interaction. And I'm going to stop there for a second because this is where we are into where Joanna brings in the deeper knowledge of spiritism, and that is the belief in the existence of the spirit realm. Now, some might refer to negative spirits as Satan or other terms, or that, you know, the, the, the devil and the angel on your shoulder, you know, someone just whispering those negative things to you. It really doesn't matter, as Shakespeare, as Shakespeare said, that which we call a rose by any other name would still smell as sweet, it doesn't matter what we call it, it still exists. So there are these spirit-related causes. It could be connected to past lives, it could be connected to this life, it could be connected to the type of life that we are living when no one else is looking. Because we live our life on social media, we post photos, and say a bunch of really nice things sometimes. But life mostly is what we're doing when we're by ourselves and no one's looking. That's when we can kind of really get an idea of who we are. But Joanna reminds us it's normal to go through hardships, failures, when there's so much going on. But let us be aware that there's always can be this component. When we're going through hardships, when we're going through difficult things, that there's always that factor to be taken into consideration, that spirit-related cause. And so what does that mean for us? So that means for us to be ever more vigilant and thoughtful. Why? Because we are, imagine ourselves like a radio. If you understand radio frequency, if you understand radio frequency, you know, back in the olden days, um, before there was, you know, streaming services, we had AM, FM radio. So I remember as a kid, like trying to like fine tune the little dial to, you know, to hit the sweet spot where you can get like the perfect connection with the local radio station. So it's kind of like that. You know, what we tune our minds to, we connect with. Does that make sense? So I'll give you a for instance. I notice, and I, I, we share this because I don't have any other example. We notice with ourselves that when we begin to watch shows or even live TV or whatnot, um, if those things are of a negative in nature, in a matter of hours or days, it's to me, it's quite obvious that how my mood shifts. Maybe not for everyone, but 
I think it, I've reached the point in my life where I can be acutely self-aware of any shift in myself. So why, why does that happen? Vibration, what we're tuning our minds to. And even I was talking to, to Daniel the other day, and he was, he used to like to watch these, these shows, and I'm forgetting what channel they were on, but it was one of those scientific, I don't know, it wasn't National Geographic, but I want to say National Geographic, but it wasn't National Ge Geographic. Um, but it was one of those crime shows where they, you know, they have a reenactment of the crime, they go into the science, like the science behind it. Sorry, Daniel, I'm outing you. Um, so he was telling me, like, there was like weeks and weeks and weeks he used to watch this, and I would just be, I would leave the room, like, I can't watch this. This is so disturbing. And he would watch it at night, which is even worse. Forensic files. So recently he told me that he observed in himself how he became, he started to become really afraid. Like even when our oldest daughter was out, like it was past midnight, he was like, oh my God. You know, like things start going through your mind because then what happens? We start recalling those memories, those, those images we see. And I, I'm not trying to put anyone on the spot. But I'm sharing this because they, in spiritism, we learn that there are negative spirits that very, that are really smart and that know how to access an, our archived memories and to pull out something that makes us afraid, like a file that you open on your computer and you become instantly afraid when you think of that thought and your, your vibration goes low. And when I say vibration goes low, try to imagine your immune system when you're sick. So when in science or in, in the medical field, we know that when you're under a, a tremendous amount of stress, your immune system is very low, you're more susceptible to illness. It's known, it's not anything new. So try to think of that in the same way that when we are continuously feeding ourselves negative things, things that are opposite of positive, we attract and we stay at that vibrationary level. And there's a part in the, in the mediums book we wanted to share. Part two, number 237, and Kardec shares, of all the difficulties presented in the practice of spiritism, among the worst we place obsession which is the domination that certain spirits may acquire over certain individuals. This domination is always the work of little evolved spirits, for good ones never exert any kind of coercion whatsoever. Instead, they provide counsel and fight against the influence of evil spirits. And whenever they are not listened to, they prefer simply to withdraw. There's a lot that we can unpack there, but because of time, we don't have the opportunity to, but I do encourage you to read if you haven't already. But just to be mindful that obsession, which is defined here, is this domination that certain spirits can have over certain individuals. Let us be aware not to be scared because fear is an impediment. It's there from our evolutionary standpoint, it's been there, but let us not be afraid to face whatever is before us. But just be mindful to be vigilant and thoughtful on how we live our lives. Joanna says the following, the more you become irritable and depressed, the more you will feel fenced in, and then even more unfortunate occurrences will take shape. Do not struggle swimming against the current until you are exhausted. Overcome its flow by diverting the direction of the water. There are perverse spirit minds around you interested in your failure. So if you can imagine there are people in your life just waiting for you to fail, Likewise, they exist in the spirit realm. So instead of fighting, just go with it. 
and learn with it. We're not saying be passive to throw your arms up and saying, whatever, I just give up, whatever. No. We're saying ride the wave to see what it can teach you and don't be afraid. She gives us the following techniques to help us. She says, fight against their wows with prayer, optimistic thoughts, and unreserved trust in God. Break the succession of mistakes by changing your mental landscape so that you do not empower the perturbing agents. Listening to enriching music that lead you to recall pleasant memories or to make exciting plans. Prayer, changing our mental landscape, our perspective, and taking in something such as music. Why music? Music has already proven in science, it's scientific fact, this is not hoopla, this, you can Google this and get all the scientific papers in the world that exist, how the, the health benefits of music. Music is good for us. Preferably, we are adding in positive music, music that is inspiring, music that, that makes us think outside the box. Not music that's depressing and makes us more pessimistic and more negative about the world that we live in. It can help reduce pain and alter patterns of pain. And it improves our overall state of mind. That's why until today in psychiatric wards you in chronic ones or acute, you will find music therapists as well as art therapists, aside from the regular medications that are used. Because it's proven to work. But we we say all this to say, or Joanna says all this to say, is that we must be proactive. We shouldn't be just passengers in our lives, but be proactive. She says, read an uplifting passage from the gospel or other edifying work in order to renew yourself emotionally. Get away from the hustle and bustle and get some rest. Contemplate a region that will lift you out of your dismal state. Think about the blissful future that awaits you. Lift yourself to God through fervent prayer and you will break the chains of affliction. This is why we asked earlier, what do you do when it rains and it pours? That feeling comes over you. And we wanted to share how important it is to read. How many of you have a book on your bedside table? Okay, how many people have books in their room? Okay, <laughs> sorry about that. A little close enough where you can probably reach it. Ish. Okay, we know that this is science once again coming to remind us. Reading is so good for us. It reduces stress. It enhances brain function. It boosts sleep. We should not, although. We ourselves are guilty of this time and time again, but we should not be on our smartphones before bed. It is proven in research to be bad for us. It, it's no good. Get a book. I'm saying this to myself, don't worry. Get a book. We promise we have a whole stack. It's just like that. It's so tempting with your smartphone, it's like, and it expands our vocabulary and improves our knowledge. And it's way better for us. It helps us as a transition into our moment of sleep, not just in a physical sense, but also in a spiritual sense, because we believe as spiritists that when we, you know, our physical bodies sleep, I, the immortal spirit that I am, can emancipate and I can go somewhere. 
And that depends upon my state of mind before I sleep. Food for thought. So be proactive. Let us not wait. Be proactive. And then, sadly, we come to an end. We say sadly because Joanna's message is so is one of hope. And we love to read on and on. But she finalizes with this thought. She says, the sun is always shining behind the gloomy clouds. And when it is placed in your inner world, no threat of darkness can begin to diminish the intensity of its light. Follow that light and confidently and peacefully defeat your day of failures. If we can try to create this inner sun inside of ourselves, to connect with that part of us that is the untouched part, the pure part of us that's connected to God, life becomes a little bit more palatable. So we share this, we share Joanna's words. They sound great, like a Picasso painting when you go to the Lou, and you're like, wow, that's beautiful. But we always say this, what we want, what we hope for ourselves and one another, all of us, is to go home and actually try this on for size, to try to implement this to go home and make a commitment to yourself to say, okay, I'm gonna read something positive every day when I wake up. It can be the Bible, it can be any book that's uplifting, that's positive, you know, it could be anything. There are so many books out there. So we challenge you that, okay, if you wanna watch Game of Thrones, if you wanna watch, I'm not even sure what's popular now these days, I forget. I don't even know if Game of Thrones is a thing, if God is even, is it like, is it still, I don't even know if it's still as popular, but um, fine if you want to watch those things. But we challenge you to add in some ingredients in your life. By a show of hands, who thinks that they'll be able to do that? Adding in a book, maybe watching something positive on TV, something funny, funny is good. Is anyone, can anyone commit to that? Okay. Okay, we have the two hands, three. Chris, okay, Diony, Jeanette, Sarah. Okay, so for those of you who already do it, I want you to commit even more. Commit even more. Push yourself, challenge yourself. We do this. Because sometimes to watch, much like I shared earlier, sometimes it's there's that part of us that enjoys watching those scientific, uh, what are they called, forensic files? Like it's, ooh, it, I know, I know, Paul, some people enjoy it. I'm not here to judge. Because, you know, the scientific perspective of it is kind of fascinating. I almost went into forensic nursing. The science behind it is really fascinating. But challenge ourselves to do something that is out of our comfort zone. So I'll share with you something that I, I've committed to try to do is to be friendly. Yeah, I, uh, we're not saying that in jest. We're not saying that to be funny or to even look good at all. Um, but in recognizing our own shortcomings and as being an introvert, that's a challenge. You know, because as an introvert, you stay in your head. You don't externalize how I ended up with a daughter that's pretty outgoing, I have no idea. Um, but ch let's challenge ourselves to be something better. That is all. We are at time with five minutes to spare. Thank you all for listening to Joanna's words and 
hearing us dive into the nitty gritty. I will pass it over to Leo. Stay there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Don't run. <laughs> Thank you, Kirsten. First of all, um, it's interesting just to follow up on the <clears throat> comment that we made earlier uh, in terms of you know talk, having a topic. I'm trying to mute this, but it's not muting. So just that's why I'm holding my phone here. Um, that the topic can be in a way worrying some, right? When we come to the spirit center, when we are trying to uplift ourselves and we're talking about dark days, right? The darkness of the soul, whatever we want to call. Um, but I, at least to me, and I can, perhaps I, I'm quite sure that some of you will share the same feeling that we have Joanna the Angel who has as a, a friend, a sister that comes and said, look, I've been through this, but there's a way out. We all go through this in the process of evolution as we, in order for us to get somewhere, we go through those moments. And um, we can see, um, knowing the spirit, you know, uh, some of her, the different reincarnations that Joanna DeAngelis went through, right? That she went through some troubling moments, right? And now coming back to us and giving us this light. So it's an amazing thing. And thank you for bringing this this moment and making positive because it's it's very hard to bring a topic like this and share with us in a positive way, right? The even though we have to go deep inside of ourselves and touch in the moments that are not great, uh, but you made it really well. So thank you for that. Um, on that note, I would like to open up if you have any comments, any questions. Because I can keep talking here, but that's not the point. <laughs> I have I, a question. Can I ask a question even though I presented? Please go right ahead. Are you asking me or are you asking everybody? Asking everybody, no, I'm hopefully. I'm ask, asking everyone. Kind of, but you know, I, I'm really curious to hear your struggles and how you experienced a, shug, a struggle, struggle or struggles, and how you were able to overcome that. And is there anyone willing to share? You don't have to go into specifics. You don't even have to say what it was that you struggled with uh, necessarily, but you can just say, I went through something hard, but this is how I found my way through it to the other side. Or this is how I'm, I'm managing it. Is there anyone, this is a safe space, but this is also very much a brave space. So if you're, you're not okay with sharing, that's totally okay. But I want you to know that there's no judgments here. Has anybody struggled? Anybody? Thank you, Paula. Paula. The ice. No, no, I'll give the short version. I have had severe twice, dark night of the soul. Both times, what saved me was a simple sentence not my will but thy will it just surfaced from the depths of the darkness and i still follow that as a model i love that i could say something as well please yeah. was well, not something like you know dying something like but it was something some moment of my life that was very difficult for me and that day was i I didn't say I didn't I didn't I could not see a way to go through, and then I I put my knees on the the floor and I prayed, and I slept, and every day was good because that prayer make, makes me stronger and I went through and uh, I'm fine today. I can add to. Um... I won't say anything what why, but um, uh, pray and uh, pray. And I have many books by my <laughs> night table and um, talking with friends and walking and exercising made me uh, go through the dark moment. So I think this is a good recipe because you don't, you know, not that I'm against you go to the psychologist or the, the psychiatrist or 
whatever, you know, that you have to pay. But, you know, these things uh, for those people that don't want to share with anybody, find a friend, walk, it's free of charge, you know, and have a, have a little animal, have a pet, help somebody, um, take care of a child, you know, any good, good, do good things. I think that can, uh, put things in perspective because sometimes you think you are on the worst of the problems and helping others can show that you are, uh, you, you can still help somebody. So you are doing good. So you are not in the worst situations uh, that life can put you in or you can put yourself in. So thank you. Any of the uh, folks of the of the younger biological age want to share anything? Angie, Daniel, have you struggled? Have you gone through something, and how have you overcome it? Even something small. Okay. Um, I'm pretty sure they can all agree. During like quarantine, it was really hard um, staying home, you know, on doing school online. Um, but one thing that I feel like everyone learned, I don't know if it was just everyone, but personally, like I learned how to enjoy my own presence. So like, Ooh, I like that. you know, working on that, you can find like who you also truly are and you're like, you know, your truth, your goals. Um, I also like the saying of like, starve the ego, nourish the soul. Ooh. I love, oh my God. Dropping, love dropping gems. But yeah, I think um, just being content, you know, with things in life because nothing lasts and you learn for those struggles, you know, you like kind of like get out that hole. So like definitely learning to be by yourself do things that you love can um, help you get out of that hole. Wow. Thank I mean, you. maybe I should have invited you to give the talk. Uh, this won't take that long, but this is an amazing synchronicity because I was reading this selection about an hour before coming. And, you know, one of my favorite words is acceptance. And these dark nights of the soul do come in all different levels, but making friends with it to the sense of accepting it, which is also the message that came through tonight. So I'll try to be brief and just read some of this, but this is from a woman named Adriana Atento, who does something called creation meditation. And she wants to talk to you about the darkness you want to keep hiding your heaviness, the parts you keep in the shadows because they're hard to face and terrifying to feel, your black night, calling it the shadowy raven you keep hidden, caged, and tied down. And though you have rejected these parts of you, let me clarify that you want them too. In fact, you're always wanting them, forever feeling their absence. You see, in order to feel the fullness of your fire, in order to be the exuberance of your light, to radiate the bright sun that is you, your shadowy raven must be set free. This darkness must join forces with your creative expression to become the great fountain of you. Keeping this darkness at bay is like cupping your hand on the fountain head. Thanks. I love that. Befriending all of your parts. Was there anything that we read today that sparked anything in anyone's mind that made you curious? Or even something maybe you didn't agree with or were unsure about? Okay. Kirsten, I have... Uh, oh, I know we have questions online. I'm sorry, yes. 
couple questions yes. here. Uh, number one, I would like to share. Uh, all of a sudden, I got all lost. Okay. From Yasko. Great reminder, Kirsten, in times of hardships and sorrow, especially in family, what takes one to bounce back while others fall even more and worse in the situation? Can you give us some preparedness tips, prophylaxis, for these life challenges as they are unavoidable in our stage of evolution? Thank you, Yasko. That's a great, great question. Don't watch those movies as Daniel was watching. <laughs> yeah. That's number one. Or maybe to diminish those rather possibly disturbing things. But I, I wanted to speak to the idea of prophylaxis because I find it very fascinating because with prophylaxis, prophylaxis, if you are living your life, you know, prophylactically, you know, taking vitamins, going to the gym, eating healthy, you know, and you're feeling the benefits of that, you know, it feels great. But when we're not doing those things, you know, we feel ill. But the thing about our mind is that when we are doing things to be prophylactic, if we're not incredibly self-aware, of our own feelings, our emotions, our mind, we might not even take notice of it. It might even begin to take it for granted and, and might stop it. So I encourage you to stop it and see the difference that you feel. And hopefully you will go running back to some prophylactic tips that Joanna shared with us here today. And even as I want, there's a part of me that even when I want to share her words again, I, I want for us to really hear it and to really see the value. But I cannot show you a Picasso and explain to you its beauty, its meaning, only you yourself, I as an individual, in studying it and putting into action, can I experience it? So prayer, choosing to have and watch positive things, we're not saying to just be on, on a, some extreme end of that spectrum where it's like, no, no, I must not ever watch the news. You know, because it's not one extreme or another. There's a balance. And you, we know our balance. We have to find that. Prayer, exercise, eating healthy, but feeding our body something positive as well. Uplifting books. Even if you just, you can keep the books that you have now. We'll put some positive ones into rotation. Those are just a few of the things that, that Joanna had, had shared and be more mindful in our lives. Thank you, Kirsten. Then I have uh, two more comments here. Uh, one by Vladimir by saying, Positive thoughts and attitudes are definitely the way to go. Thank you, Kirsten, for helping us to keep that constantly in our mind. Great topic. And then Abby makes a comment and asks, great talk, Kirsten. The suicide rates are so very high, as you said. I wonder, since the numbers are extremely high, is it only due to the pandemic? Thank you, Abby, for your question. So there are so many factors that go into this. And for sure, those who already had pre-existing um, mental or psychological challenges, for sure, the experience of the pandemic added to the stress for many reasons, because it was an unknown, it's uncharted territory, we would say for the vast majority of humanity. So we didn't know how to handle it. 
And so for those who did not have a pre-existing or any known pre-existing mental uh, or emotional challenges, for sure began to experience them during this pandemic because it's pushed us to our brink. But that's what challenges are meant to do. They're meant to push us to look at things, to look at ourselves, not things, ourselves. How am I feeling? How am I feeling towards myself? How am I managing my emotions? How am I dealing with my life? So yes, multiple factors, Abby. Think Anyone that was else the... with any other questions, comments? I have a question. Okay. I have a um, great example uh, of an individual who works with me, and the person tends to say that, you know, when the A or B or C happens right in the morning, the person tends to say, oh, it's going to be one of those days. And I hear that quite a bit. And sometimes it's just um, a as a consequence of minor issues that happens, right? And the person tends to see that those little things that just happen is going to be you know, a dark day, right? A dark moment of their life. Can this be, because it happens on planet Earth, this idea of seeing everything as a darkness as well, as a dark day, dark moment, whatever we want to call, as a chronic illness? And if it is, what can we do to change that perspective? Wow, that's a great question, Leo. How would you answer that? Happen. <laughs> <laughs> well... <laughs> Well, number one, I, I you know, looking at it's, the, it's not that I, I can't answer it, but I, th I think it's something, I think it's good when we challenge ourselves mm -hmm. to ask ourselves those questions. Well, I thought you would enlighten a little bit more, oh, but I'll okay. give it a take. I can do that no, too, I'll yeah. give it a take because you know it, it's and the reason, as you were saying, I was thinking about it, and it's very easy for a person to see, you know, get beat up one day, the second day, and third day. I, we feel, I feel that way as well, right? But and and I feel sad that the individual sees life that way, right? It's just again minor things. It's gonna be it's gonna be a rainy day again. It's gonna be a tough day again, right? And it's that pattern that we go into. And the, the what I try to do as far as you know, individual right next to it, sometimes having to deal with that person throughout the day as well. I try to bring the positive, right? Look what's happening. So it's not that you know bad of a day. It's not that you know the end of the world. Um, but it can be tiring, I believe, for the person, not to me, because as we try to tune with different things, I try to let go because that's the person perspective. Mm -hmm. But I do feel that it is a kind of uh, sickness. A, a sickness that it goes on, especially when we add, as, as Abby just mentioned, pandemics, not just the COVID-19, but all the pandemics as well that are going on out there, pandemics of the mind, of the heart. And it's tragic, mm -hmm. right, to, a, yeah. to an extent. So that's why I bring, because I think that we need to change our perspective in certain ways. Yeah, it can be um, um, a tough day, but look, there's a way out. And one of the things <laughs> that I like to remind myself and others as well is, it is that there is tomorrow. And tomorrow, I can have a different perspective about it. So that's what I would yeah. leave everyone with. I'm going to add to that. Please do. <laughs> so pessimism can become in a matter of speaking, chronic. But what is more alarming and, and for us is more alarming, I can't think of another word, um, is that pessimism can lead to biological and mental illness. So when we think about in medicine, they tell us that being obese, uh, not having a proper diet, you know, being a certain BMI, we are more prone to developing type 2 diabetes. It's, 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 it's in the science. We know it. So if you can think about that, but think about it from this emotional, um, from the process of our minds, we also can create illness within us when we are constantly being pessimistic. We are creating these neural pathways that are negatively impacting us. So we are, we know that in science, this is a fact that when we are under stress, our physical body feels it. 
basically our, our immune system is lowered. When we are consistently and constantly doing that to ourselves again and again and bombarding our own selves with that, we put ourselves into a state of illness. So it's, it's alarming. Now, we have this information. What can we do? I can't go and tell this necessarily to another person because, A, I'm not here to be anyone else's um, corrector. But all I can do is be positive myself and hope that rubs off on others. I can... I mean, we are all examples for one another. Everyone, each one of us, whether we realize it or not, each person who's sitting in this room has affected my life in small and big ways. So we are all positively or negatively impacting one another depending upon how we live our lives. So let's think about that too. You said something really important as well, that it's not that we're gonna push the individual, individual way, quite the opposite, but also we have to make sure that we are protecting ourselves because it's very easy to fall into the same trap, right? And see, okay, yeah, it is a bad day. After all, it was a bad day, right? And then we go to bed and we're not reading. We're not doing, you know, the things that we're not praying, right? So I think that is a great reminder. And that's, um, you know, I hope everyone got, you know, um, a positive idea of what Joanna D'Angelo is bringing to us. I wanted to add another thing. Please. It's also just as detrimental to be in this false optimism, this false idea or fake optimism of dismissing the obvious. You know, someone's telling you like, oh gosh, this is just such a rough day. Like, no, 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 no. Come on, think positive. It's not about dismissing or disregarding because as Paula had just shared, it's not about denying the parts of us that we feel, the parts of us that feel sad or discouraged but it's embracing those parts of us, saying that they're, we're, you're welcome in my space. <laughs> you are welcome in this space and I accept you in this space. And you can show that those parts of you that feel weakened, that you can show up for those parts. Too many times we are waiting for our knight in shining armor we're waiting for that person to show up in our lives to just make everything better. But we are that person. We can be that person. I can show up for myself. And when you, I've worked for many years with trauma survivors. And when you talk to a trauma survivor, when they go through therapy, one of the things that they are taught is learning how to show up for themselves when others in their lives did not show up for them. That's the kind of power that we have. So I wanted to end with that. Leo, I'll give the rest of the... Thank rest you, of you so much. Um, again, folks, it's as Kirsten said earlier, we have to end, right? But and the conversation, I think that the continuation goes on as how we put this in practice, right? Um, and we're all invited to do so. We're all in the same boat. Um, just because we're speaking, just because we're, you know, presenting something, we're not, we haven't mastered this at all. Um, and we um, have been given the tools to go ahead and, and change these dark days. They're going to come, whether as a consequence, uh, whether as of of the 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 long past or the 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 short past right but the it, the the truth of the matter is we'll all go through and i think that is the um it, it's it's a good thing obviously it's a bad thing but it's also a good thing because nobody incarnated on planet earth right now is away from it or safe from it right so on that note let us pray let us go through the moment of passes um, and share this moment with one another. As we are praying, as we are receiving the passes, let us think about perhaps the issues that we didn't share, rightly so, because we want to keep to ourselves. The things that we have seen, the things that we know about one another, we can pray for one another, we can ask God not only...